So welcome to the Essentials class. Um, you guys have been participating in this class for a little while now. For those of you who haven't been to too many of these classes, I kind of want to first start by kind of explaining the antithesis behind this class. Why do we call it essential? And I'd ask for all of you to kind of provide your insight to me after class is over, either staying on with the chat after class, um, or as we post this um, online after class, leave some comments to let us know. Because um, my big question for you guys is, what is essential to you? You know, we want to design all of these classes to really mirror the things that you want to work on the most, the things that you experience throughout the day and throughout the week that are most challenging for you or you feel like you need to work on the most. Those are the essential things that we really want to help you with and the things that we want to address in this class. You know, so typically, you know, what we were trying to um, work on um, as far as what we deem as essential is mobility, flexibility, strength, and stability. Um, so today's class is going to be a little bit more about sensory integration. So it's gonna, that's why I asked everyone for this class, to take your shoes off. If you're on a slippery surface, make sure you're taking your socks off as well. We're gonna be progressing from the floor up to a standing position for today's class. And we're gonna be doing that with no shoes on. So the big idea behind today's class is sensory integration, okay? A lot of times with Parkinson's or um, stroke or any kind of neurological condition, a lot of times our sensory input from our feet, our hands, the way our body moves in space, we call that proprioception, that can be impaired, right? It, can't, it, can, it might not be as strong on one side as on the other side. So the goal for today's class is to use your toes, your feet, your hands, and just to create more awareness for your body in space with all the movements that we do, okay? Hopefully I'll make you sweat, hopefully I'll make you work, but that is our goal for today. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Excellent. I am going to go ahead and mute everyone here. And we'll get started. We're going to be starting on your feet. All right. So why don't we have everyone stand up? Okay. Make sure you have a nice clear path around you. I'm going to move my screen down here quick. So you guys can see my mat. So from here, I want you to have a nice big wide base of support. We're gonna be going down to the floor here in a minute, but let's just kind of get in touch with our feet, all right? If you're seated in a chair, you can do the same thing. Just, what I want you to do is just kind of get a sense of where your feet are on the surface that you're standing on. Is it a hard surface? Is it a soft surface? Is it a carpet? And kind of grip it with your toes. So just gonna give you some toe curls, okay? And just get a sense of how that floor feels underneath your feet. And where is the weight? of your body through your feet? Is it through the balls of your feet? Is it through your heels? Is it more on the right side? Is it more on the left side? So just kind of get that overall sense of like body awareness. Where are my feet? Where is my body in my own space? Now, as we're there, what I want you to try to do is let's root those feet into the floor, okay? That's what helps with a lot of balance and stability. So I want you to grip down through your toes. Grip your big toe down into the floor like you're nailing it down into the ground. I also want you to do the same thing with your heels. Okay. Now, if you feel unsteady here, chances are your feet are a little bit too close together. So get yourself a nice wide shoulder width base of support. If you're still a little, feeling a little bit unbalanced there, take one foot slightly in front of the other. And again, we're gripping your big toe and your heel right into the floor. Can I get a sense of how that feels? Now I want you to shift all of your weight onto that front leg or to the left leg. Okay. Whatever leg is forward or, or to your left side and feel that pressure down through that side. Now we're going to push back over to the other side. Okay. And just feel how that pressure shifts from right to left. Okay. A lot of the work that we're going to do is going to involve balance, core stability and strength, especially as you go to stand. And as we get our bodies warmed up, we want to know how those feet are feeling. Okay. When you take your shoes off, let's just start with a nice rock from side to side. When you take your shoes off, that allows you to use all the stabilizer muscles in your feet. Okay. It allows you to be much more aware of how your feet are reacting when you hit the floor, when your feet land on the ground or when you're trying to maintain your stability and strength. So sometimes it's a good idea. Take those shoes off at home, do your core exercises, do your homework exercises and kind of get in touch, get that, that sensory input to your feet. All right. So if you're in a chair, I want you to just go into a march. Okay. If you're standing, let's go into a high knee march, opposite arm, opposite leg. Okay, drive those feet up nice and tall. Drive those knees up as tall as you can. 
be aware of what leg is driving up higher. Okay, is one leg easier than the other? If you're standing, that could be due to balance. Okay, be aware of that now. We're gonna kind of recall this as we come back after we do our exercises from the floor. All right, so side to side weight shift, high knee march. Let's go five more. One, let's go a little slower. Two, three, be mindful of your balance. Four, one more time, and five. Let's get those feet back nice and wide. Again, root those feet into the floor. Give me a little bend in your knees. And we're gonna shift and reach from one side, look at that hand, and then shift and look to the other side. Look at that hand. So you should feel that weight shifting from one leg to the other. And those eyes will help you shift that weight from one side over to the other side. Okay, so we're just looking side to side. We're weight shifting side to side. If you're in a chair, you're just leaning and dipping from side to side. Okay, let's do one more on each side. I want you to hold it, hold it over. Okay, you should be, I'm reaching to my right side. All my, like 75% of my weight is on that right leg. So feel that pressure through that leg. Look out at that hand. And then we're going back over to the left side. Okay. Shift 75% of your weight on the left leg. Look at that left hand. That right leg is just there for strength and stability. Okay, let's bring it back to the middle. Really, again, really root those feet into the floor. We're gonna go down into a squat. As you do that, let's press both hands together. Okay, press your hands together as strong as you can. Squeeze your belly button in. Okay, you should feel like a rock in this position. Really, really stable. Okay, we're gonna squat down. And then as you stand up, press both hands up above the head, reach up as tall as you can. Look at those hands, and they're bringing it right back down. Hands to the chest, squatting down low. Feel that pressure through your feet. Drop your butt back in your stance, and stand up nice and tall, all right? So I, usually we pair this with breathing. Today, I want you to pair this just with more awareness of where your body weight is as we squat down. Weight is on the heels, pushing those big toes into the floor. Your back is tall. You can see the camera. You can see the screen. Now as we raise up, those eyes follow the hands. Up nice and tall. Now from there, let's take those arms all the way out to the side. Okay. If you can see yourself on your screen, are both hands even? I notice my left hand is commonly a little bit lower than my right hand. Okay. So make sure both hands are nice and even. And we're going to twist from right to left. Hold that position there. I gotta let a few more people into the class here. Hold on one second. So hold that position for me, okay? Hold that position. Be aware of how those shoulder blades are feeling. Okay, is it difficult to hold those arms up? Okay. Nice, tall posture, okay? Now bring those hands all the way out to the front. Reach those hands out in front of you. Reach them out in front of you as far as you can. All right, reach them out as far as you can. Widen out those fingertips. So those fingertips should be nice and wide while keeping those hands nice and wide. Open back up. Okay, squeeze and pinch those shoulder blades. If I turn around, I'm really pinching through those shoulder blades. My eyes are kind of gazing up toward the ceiling. And then as you come back forward, you're pulling those hands back out to the front. Okay, pull those hands right back out to the front and open up one more time. Okay, now as you're here, let's get in touch with our fingers. Hold those arms out nice and wide. Okay, that's gonna help work the shoulders and the posture. But I want you to squeeze, make a fist with those fingertips. Okay, and then explode those fingers out. Squeeze, make a fist. Focus on that explosion of those fingers. Okay, we're gonna draw more mindful attention to the hands and to the feet as we move to the floor. But let's just kind of get an awareness of how they're feeling right now. So squeeze as hard as you can, but really explode as much as you can. Let's do three more of these. Squeeze and explode, that's one. Squeeze and explode, that's two. Squeeze and explode, that's three. Now, keeping those hands open, take your middle or your pointer finger to your thumb. Squeeze and explode. Now, the next finger to your thumb. Squeeze and explode. Your ring finger to your thumb.
squeeze and explode. Last one, pinky finger to thumb. Squeeze and explode. Let's give those arms a rest, okay? Just kind of sweep them around at your side. That sensory input, okay? We're gonna be doing it from the floor. We're gonna get in touch with every finger, your feet, your toes, okay? So we're gonna make our way back down to the mat. Let's get on your mat on your back, okay? So get safely get down onto the mat on your back. If you need a pillow, have that pillow nearby. I wanna make sure we're not needing to add anybody else into class here. For those of you who are just joining us, feel free to take off your shoes for this class, okay? We are not gonna be using our shoes. We are going to be trying to increase the sensory input through our feet and through our hands today. So no shoes, we're gonna get down onto the floor. So while you're on the floor, on your back, let's lie nice and flat, okay? The more neutral you can get your head, the better. Let's start with the knees bent. This can help neutralize your spine. Your hands are down right next to your hips with your palms down into the floor, okay? The so palms down into the floor, press those palms into the floor, press your feet into the floor. As you do that, you should feel those muscles in the back of your arms tighten up. And as you press your feet into the floor, you should feel those muscles on the bottom side of your legs, the back side of your legs kind of fire up. Those are your hamstrings. Those are the muscles that help keep us standing taller, help us to kick our leg out a little bit bigger. And what I want you to do now is pushing all of those things into the floor, pushing your head into the floor. Okay, so we're trying to make contact with the ground in every point of our body that is in contact with the floor, our head, our shoulder blades, our hands, our feet, okay? That helps keep us nice and neutral, our lower back, okay? If you feel that lower back arching, try to push your butt down into the floor or your belly button in through your spine, okay? Take two deep breaths here. Just be aware of where your body is on that floor. What does that carpet feel like on your toes? Okay, what does a hard wood feel like underneath your feet? Increasing that sensory input is only gonna help you be more aware of your balance and your stability once we go to stand, all right? Now from here, we're gonna go into a bridge, okay? So I want you to push those hands down into the floor, push those feet into the floor with your heels and your toes, and we're gonna exhale, raise those hips up, okay? Raise those hips up. Now, where should we be feeling this? Your goal here is not to get as high as you can, that extends your lumbar spine a little bit too much. If you feel it in your lower back, drop those hips down just slightly, squeeze your butt. Okay, you should really be feeling it in your butt, pushing those arms down into the floor, okay? And then let's lower it back down. We're gonna go up for one more hold, okay? So push the arms down, feet are into the floor, head is back into the floor. Now bridge those hips up. If you're in a chair, go ahead and do a sit to stand for me, okay? If you're not, let's stay here and hold those hips up nice and strong, okay? Be aware of how your feet are feeling on the floor now. Keep the heels and your toes pressed into the ground. Keep pressing those arms into the floor. Keep pressing the head into the floor and squeeze your butt. We're gonna hold it for five, four, three, two, one, and slowly lower it down. Let's straighten out one leg, kind of roll that ankle out. Okay, bring that leg back up, straighten out the other leg, roll out that ankle, okay? Now, we're gonna straighten out the right leg, okay? The left leg is gonna stay bent. I want you to flex your toe up towards your knee on that right leg. That's gonna keep your leg as straight as possible. And your goal here is to raise that leg up as high as you can while keeping that leg straight and that toe flexed. So we're gonna go down and up five times. I, I just want you to be aware of what you're feeling. Down and up five times. Here we go, down and up. Exhale, that's one. Down and up, exhale. Two, down and up, exhale. That's three, down and up, exhale. Four, down and up, exhale, five, okay? Now, what did you feel there? Okay, maybe, maybe we felt a little strain, it's hard to keep that leg straight. The higher you go, the more you should feel a little stretch back on those hamstrings, all right? This is an active lengthening exercise for those hamstrings we were just working, 
okay? So let's flex that toe up. Now on the left side, that right knee is bent. And you're gonna exhale, drive that leg up. That's one, if you're in a chair, okay, straighten that leg all the way out and you can do the same thing. Raise that leg up as straight as you can and then slowly lower it back down. This is all about control. Here's number three, exhale. Make sure those toes are still pulling towards your shins and down, that's three. Exhale, that's four. One more time, exhale, that's five. Very nice, let's bend those knees. Okay, back into the floor. Now, what I want you to try to do is raise up on your toes and then up on your heels, okay? So you're going calf raise, toe raise, calf raise, toe raise. Which one is easier, okay? Are both feet moving the same way, okay? What I want you to do from here is hold that calf raise up. I feel a really tense tightening in the bottom of my arches and my feet, okay? As I raise my heels, as I, I'm sorry, as I raise my toes, I feel a little stretch in the back side of my calf and my calf muscles really firing up. So what I want you to do, now we're gonna go up into that same bridge, lift your toes, bridge, okay? Now, while you're holding that bridge up, push your toe down and back up. Push your toes down, keeping your hips up, okay? Toes down and up. What are you feeling as you make that transition with your toes pressing into the floor? Do you feel those muscles working any differently? As you push your toes down, you might feel a little more hamstring activation, okay? Let's keep those toes down. If you guys really want to advance it, you can try to lift your heels up, okay? That's gonna fire up your calves and the backside of your hamstrings so much more and drop it back down, okay? So let's try that again. Lower those hips all the way down to the floor. Again, if you're in a chair, go ahead and do a sit to stand for me. And as you stand up, just being aware of your posture at the top of that stand from here. Okay, let's start with your toes up. We're gonna bridge with your toes up. Exhale, lift, pushing those hands in toward the floor. It's gonna help keep you grounded. Now, keeping those hips up, keeping those heels on the floor, push your toes into the floor, and then raise them back up. Let's do that three times. Toes down and up, that's one. Toes down and up, that's two. Toes down and up, three, down, up, four, down, up, that's five. Nice. Now let's push the toes down, lift the heels. We don't really use the toes and the heels with our workouts all that much. We focus on huge, big, dynamic movements, but getting more in touch with your ankles, your feet, your hips, and your core, and how those help you remain stable, it's huge. It is essential. All right, let's lower those hips back down. Ah, take those arms out nice and wide. Shake those legs out a little bit, straighten them out, kind of roll out your toes, roll out your ankles, okay? We're gonna practice a big twist, okay? So we're gonna do a 10 big twists. It's gonna look like this. You're gonna take your right arm. Exhale, twist over to the left. This is a power twist. You're gonna open back up, eyes follow your hands, and then you take your left hand over to the right hand. And exhale, this is number two. Okay, let's open back up. If you're in a chair, you can do the same thing. Take your arms out wide. <sighs> Exhale as you twist. That's three. Open up. Again, we're not going fast. It's a deliberate, powerful twist. It just helps us be more mobile in bed. Which, and again, we're trying to increase sensory input <sighs> with what we're doing in today's class. So which side is harder? Okay. On these next three reps, try to identify which way is it harder for you to twist. For me, it's going to my left. It's just a little bit harder than going to my right. Harder to initiate to that side. That's common. It's harder on one side than the other. Okay, now let's take a pause. Get nice and flat. Now, which side was harder? For any exercise, strength, mobility, flexibility, strength, <laughs> uh, any of those, all of those things. We wanna be aware of how our body is moving, okay? That side that's more difficult, that's the side we really gotta target. So we're doing five more big power twists to the side that was more difficult. I'm going to my left, you go with, to whatever side is more challenging. Be mindful, be big, five big twists. Ready and go, one.
Open back up. Pause and go. Two. Open back up. Go. Three. Open back up. Go. Four. Open back up. Go. And five. Very nice. Okay. Now, from there, let's get onto your stomach. We're going to roll onto your stomach. I got to let one more person in here. All right, so let's roll onto your stomach. We're going to go into the hands and knees, folks. Okay, we're going to come up onto your hands and knees. So we call this quadruped or tabletop position. All right, if you guys are in Pilates, tabletop is kind of what they refer to here. So a couple things. I want your knees directly underneath your hips. I want your hands directly underneath your shoulders. All right, if you're seated in a chair, I want you sitting up tall with those arms firmly pressing out in front of you, okay? So if you're seated, press those arms firmly out in front of you. And for all of us, okay, spread those fingertips as wide as you can on the mat. So spread those fingertips out as wide as you can. The hips are right underneath the knees. I'm sorry, the hips are right over the knees. <laughs> the hands are right underneath your shoulders. And you are strong here. The same way we found our roots when we were standing for that warm up, we want to find them here. Okay, so you're strong, pushing strong through those arms, strong through each fingertip, okay? Strong through each knee, and your toes are flexed, all right? So, what we're going to do from here is being as strong as we can through those hands. I want you to push strongly through those hands, push your spine up toward the ceiling, tuck your chin down toward the floor. What are we feeling there? You should feel a little more pressure down through your hands. You're squeezing that belly button up and in. This is called a cat. Okay, if you guys have done cat cows, this is the cat position. You're pushing that spine up toward the ceiling. Now, as you come down, okay, you're relaxing that back down toward the floor. Look out in front of you, keeping those arms nice and strong. So we're putting a lot of pressure through those hands, okay? Great for postural stability and strength to maintain your stability here. Be aware of one elbow bending, okay? A lot of our times our clients with PDE or any MS and neurological conditions, that, that one weaker side tends to bend. Let's straighten it out. Feel a lot of strength here, a lot of stability. Because now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go up into that cat one more time. Push through the hands, every fingertip is pushing into the floor. You're rounding that spine up toward the ceiling. Tucking that chin down toward your chest. Take one deep breath there. Relax it down, relax that spine, look out in front of you, okay? Look out in front of you as far as you can, kind of push your butt back, eyes go up, all right? Now we're gonna come back into that neutral position. If you're starting to feel it in your arms, good. That means we gotta work on that shoulder and arm stability. What we're gonna do from here is go into a single leg kickback, okay? So those hands are gonna stay rooted into the floor. Each fingertip is pressing into the ground. Okay, you're gonna kick one leg straight back behind you. All right, that leg is straight back. You're flexing your toe just like we did with those straight leg raises. And then you're pointing that knee back down to that starting position. And then you're kicking back with the opposite side. Okay, now why is this a good exercise to do? Well, we gotta shift our weight, right? But as we shift our weight, we have to maintain our stability. That helps us walk better, okay? If any of you guys have a trouble time with freezing, a lot of times that you know, makes it really inefficient when you're shifting your weight. And if we learn to shift our weight better, that can help relieve some of those freezing episodes. So kick that leg back, flex that toe, get that leg as straight as you can. Again, today's class is all about being mindful, increasing what we call proprioception, your body's awareness of where it is in space. Kick that foot back. Get that leg back. If you guys have any opportunity to, when you're exercising at home to do it in front of a mirror, that is a great way to do these classes and to give yourself a little self check as you're going throughout. So we're going to single leg kick back. Keep going. We got one more on each side. We're going to hold this one back there. Okay. Be strong through those arms. How are those arms feeling? Let's get back in touch with those fingertips. Lift that leg as high as you can. We're going to tap the toe, keeping that leg straight down to the mat. Okay, we're going to raise up five times. Up, one, and down. Up, two, 
and down. Stay strong through those arms. Up, three, and down, up, four, and down, up, five, and down. Let's come up and stand on those knees, okay? If you guys are feeling the arms, you should be, okay? Breaking a little sweat, you should be. <laughs> if you're activating, if you're really strong through these exercises, you should be feeling some good activation of your core muscles and every other stabilizer in your body. So from here, we're gonna come, let's do one big arm circle up. Sweep those arms around the side, shake them out a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing on the other leg. We're straightening out whatever leg you didn't straighten out last time, you're doing this time for me. That's that left leg. I'm gonna kick it back. You're pressing your toe in toward the floor. That knee is as straight as you can make it. We are strong through those hands. Again, through the hands, we want the wide fingertips. Big wide fingertips. Kick that foot back. All right, now we're raising straight leg up. Straight leg up and down. Stay strong through the upper body. Up and down. Exhale as we lift. That's three. That's four. One more time. That's five. Very nice. Bring that leg back in. Coming back up to the knees. Nice big tall posture from here. So I'm going to rotate toward you guys. Okay, so now we're gonna be in that kneeling position. We've done a lot of exercises in this class from this position. It's one of my favorite ways to help improve hip stability, posture, and balance. Okay, your balance center is everywhere between your knees and your shoulders. Let's take the feet out of the equation. We'll get there once we go to stand. Okay, but from here, that wide base of support, talked about that in the beginning, root those knees into the floor. Now, when you're here, we gotta draw more mindful awareness to your hips. If I turn back to my side, if my hips are back here, my head is forward, you're gonna feel a lot of tension in that lower spine. You're gonna feel those hamstrings really having to work, okay? It's gonna be hard to maintain that position. So bring your butt up, look up toward the ceiling and try to get your shoulders over your hips and your hips right over your knees, okay? Now from here, be mindful and be aware of that posture. We're gonna raise both hands up, nice and tall. Eyes can follow those hands. And again, we're drawing mindful awareness. We need to focus on that extension of those fingertips. So open those hands up nice and wide. We're going down, kick those arms back behind you and drive it up. We're going five times. Try to get a little bit taller with each one and down, drive it up. Hips come up, eyes come up. That's two and down, drive it up. This is three and down with the arms. Keep that posture tall and up. That's four. Drive it down and up, that's five. If, guys, if this is troubling on your knees, grab a chair, okay? For those of you on your knees, stay there. But if you need to come up off the floor, you can do this from a chair. Same idea, same principle, okay? We're gonna do this one more time. So from your knees or from that chair, arms go back and drive it up, nice and tall. Arms go up and back down. Now this time at the top of that lift, Push those hands together if you can. Try to get those hands, clap them together and back down. If you can't get there, that's okay. Just try to get them as close as you can, as straight as you can. And the goal would be the more you practice, the closer you can get those arms. That improves your shoulder mobility and range of motion. Drive it up, nice and tall. Eyes can follow those hands. We got one more time, down and up. Very nice, okay. So I'm gonna come back down to the knees here, all right? Last one from this position, how well we shift and move our weight, okay? We gotta shift from one side to the other side. We gotta get those hips up that we just practiced, right? It all works together. Hips are up, posture is up. We're shifting from one side to the other side, okay? Maintaining control and only reaching as far as you can to be able to bring yourself back to the center and then to the other side. If you're in your chair, okay, same thing. You're reaching and leaning from one side to the other side, keeping that firm base of support with your feet. If you're feeling too tippy in your chair or tippy on your knees, get your knees wider, okay? That's gonna help build that base of support, okay? Side to side. Let's go four more big reaches. Again, be mindful. What side is more challenging? There's two. Reach it over, back, there's three. 
over and back. That's four. Okay, now from here, how do we stand up? Okay, if you need a chair to help you stand up, have that nearby, right? If you need a chair to help you, okay, get both hands on that chair. You're just pulling one knee up nice and flat and back down, okay? Or the other foot up, whatever leg you feel more confident with, that's that leg that's gonna help you up and down off the floor. Let's go ahead and stand up, okay? Stand up nice and tall, take your time. If you're feeling a little dizzy as you stand up there, okay? Take a little minute. If you wanna stay seated for this one, go ahead and stay seated. But we're gonna come back to everything that we began with today. Again, the focus of today's class is to increase sensory awareness through your feet, through your fingertips, okay? That's gonna help us have more and better body awareness when you're walking, when you're doing any kind of fine motor activities, being more aware of how those hands are working, how those toes are working, and how your feet kind of rock and shift as you move helps you perform better every day. So back with that nice big wide base of support with your feet, just like we started. The toes are rooted into the floor, the heels are rooted into the floor. If you're seated in your chair, same thing. Toes and heels rooted into that chair or into the floor. Your hips are rooted into the chair, but not, not for long, okay? So root yourself here and let's rock and shift one side to the other, okay? Be more aware as you shift to one side, okay? The side that's holding more weight. So as I shift to my left, 75% of my weight is in that, in, the, in that leg. As you shift to the other side, 75% here, 25% percent here for stability. Keep going side to side as big as you can and as dynamically as you can and maintaining your balance. You can maybe feel a little bit more stable now that we've activated all those muscles. This is why these exercises are great to do on a daily basis. Increase mindful awareness of how your body is moving in space. This should help, okay? Now, let's come back to a nice wide base of support. A lot of times we do power up right? Big sit to stand, big squat, okay? What's important is posture and form, right? So let's kind of relay everything that we did in class today to help you get up and out of a chair easier or stand up, pick something up off the ground a little bit easier. So let's everyone imagine that there's uh, a watermelon. Watermelons are heavy, right? <laughs> um, we got to pick it up and the heavier the things are that we need to pick up, the more you have to be engaged here and the more important your form is. So grab, have that imaginary watermelon in your hand. We're going to squat down, having weight through your toes and your heels. We're squatting down, okay? Weight is in your toes and your heels. We're powering up nice and tall, okay? You're still holding that watermelon down, okay? Hold it down right here. Squat down, get your butt back, watch that screen and power up nice and tall at the top. We're going to hold it up on this one. You're going to squat down. Hold it up strong here. Remember those bridges we were doing when you felt it in your hamstrings and your butt? Okay, those are the stabilizer muscles that are gonna help you feel more stable here. All right, so be aware of that as you come up from that stand. We got two more, squat down, big power up. Okay, strong at the top, squat down, and a big power up. All right, now as we go to reach and do things throughout the day and you're in your kitchen, you gotta reach for a spice at the top shelf. Okay, you're taking that watermelon and you're lifting it up above your head. That tends to throw our balance off, right? We gotta be strong here. We gotta be strong here and be aware of our body and where it is in order to move better and more safely. So our last exercise, you're taking that watermelon from here. We're nice and strong. Curl it up to your chest. We're going straight up overhead, okay? Straight up overhead. If we do this and we hyperextend, you're gonna be back on your heels, okay? Lift that watermelon to the chest, press it up and out in front of you. You should feel some tightening of these muscles right here if you're stable in your butt and your, your hips, okay? So curl it up, press it out, okay? I know we don't have any weight today. This is a little bit different, right? But it's all about being aware of how our body is moving through these movements, okay? Being aware of our movements through these movements. It's a little redundant, but that's okay. <laughs> So pressing up. Now, as we press to the side, let's say we're picking that watermelon up and we got to rotate, okay? Coming back to the center and you got to rotate and put it over to the other shelf. We have to shift our weight while maintaining that stability, right? So as you shift your weight and you rotate, same way we did on the floor, 
right? Which side is more difficult? Chances are it's the same side through this movement. You're not as stable shifting your weight to that side. We gotta draw more awareness to that side. So is it your right? Is it your left? That's one last final five rep count. Okay, we're starting at your chest, going to whatever side is more difficult five times in a row, always coming back to that center. Ready? And lift and back. That's one, get a little squat in those legs, okay? Lift and back, that's two. Lift it up and back, that's three. Lift it up and back, that's four. One more time, lift it up and back, that's five. Very nice job, everybody. Okay, a little bit different focus for today's class. Maybe not as rigorous, you might not have gotten out of breath. That's okay, our mind-body awareness is an essential part of us helping to live stronger and move better every day. So I hope this helps. Again, I kinda wanna hear from you guys. What are the essential things that you feel like you need to be better at on a daily basis? It's not about what you do in this class or what you do in your workouts when you're coming in or going to another program. It's about how you function and move all day, the rest of the day. So we wanna know what those essential things are to you and how you want to improve them. So please, I'll stick around um, after class here. Love to hear your feedback, as well as you know, shoot us an email or leave a comment after we post the video and uh, we'd be happy to help and kind of design these classes going forward to help you guys the most. So thank you very much. Have a great day. Enjoy your Saturday. Here in Chicago, it's nice and rainy. so. Stay inside and exercise a little bit more. <laughs>